Good morning, brethren and sistren. Um, I think that's the correct word. I hope everybody's having a good week. Um, it's towards the end of the week, and I know there was definitely some days mm -hmm. this week when I was uh, pretty tired, and I can imagine that's the case for a lot of you. We live in a very fast-paced society, and sometimes we just get uh, feeling like we've we've given it all and we've been we've been pouring ourselves out. And that's that's what I want to talk to you about today. But um, I want to talk specifically about us pouring ourselves out to God, because we can pour ourselves out to many things, but um, pouring ourselves out for God is a is a different matter. Um, but it's no less draining. And uh, and so what what I want to talk to you about is the drink offering. And the reason I started out like that is because there are several times in the scriptures where drink offerings are offered uh, to other gods and there's a condemnation because people are pouring out to other gods. And of course, the Lord is not in favor of that. Um, but there is a drink offering that was supposed to be offered on the altar of the Lord. And the Apostle Paul references it. And uh, and so I want to talk about that briefly. And it's not described in the first several chapters of Leviticus, the way some of these other offerings are described in detail. And I think it's because it was a really simple. All they do, they would take, um, you know, whatever it was of wine, then this is obviously probably not what they would keep the wine in, but I just grabbed it because it was a good illustration tool. And, but they would all, they, they would bring it to the altar and they would just pour it all out, pour it out before the Lord. And, uh, it's so pretty simple. They, it was the same thing. Jacob did it when he set up an altar in Bethel, once he had returned and been reconciled with his brother. And after he had wrestled with, um, with the Lord and his name had been changed and he's back in the land, and the Lord called him back to that place where he had first had that dream of the ladder going to heaven. And uh, Jacob built an altar there to the Lord. And he set up a pillar in the place where God had talked with him. Uh, and he poured a drink offering thereon. And he poured oil thereon. And he just pours out, here's a drink offering for you, Lord. And uh, in the tabernacle in Exodus 29, when he's telling them how, what offerings they're supposed to offer every day. They were supposed to offer a lamb in the morning with a grain offering, a lamb in the evening. And uh, part of what they were supposed to offer was uh, the fourth part of a hen of wine for a drink offering. And, and they were supposed to, a fourth part, a, a hen is about one and a half gallons for us. So a fourth part would be like one and a half quarts. So one and a half quarts, picture that in your mind, of wine that they just take and pour it out. Pour it out before the Lord onto the altar. Um, Numbers 28, 7 says, The drink offering thereof shall be a fourth part of an hen for the one lamb in the holy place shalt thou cause the strong wine to be poured out unto the Lord for a drink offering. And they wouldn't drink any wine in the holy place. Um, Leviticus 10 makes that very explicit that Aaron and his sons, the priests, were not supposed to touch wine when they were coming before the Lord. They were supposed to be completely sober-minded. Um, but they were supposed to bring a one and a half quarts and other offerings prescribed more, but they were supposed to bring a certain amount to pour it out to the Lord. Isn't that interesting? And... Um, <clears throat> The Apostle Paul actually uses this as an example in, uh, he describes himself like this in Philippians 2.17. In Philippians, he is writing, he's from, writing from prison, and there's the possibility that he could be, uh, that he could, you know, be killed. And he says, at that point, it's like, I don't think I will. I think I'm going to get out. But I desire to be with Christ, which is better. Uh, but to say is better for you. So I'm torn. You know, he's talking like that. Um, and, uh, he he talks about being offered for on the on the altar for the Philippians, and the ESV says it this way. I'm using the ESV because it highlights the drink offering uh, portion. But he says, even if I am to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. And so there's this idea of Paul being completely poured out. And that imagery is even used of Jesus when uh, the prophecy from Isaiah 53, it talks about his soul being poured out unto death. And uh, and I wonder, why does Paul use this um, this example of the drink offering? And, uh, and that I think part of it is because the drink offering sort of seems like a waste. They, they just, they would take this one and a half quarts of a drink offering and they would just all, empty it all out. Like some of the other offerings, there was benefits from it. The priest would eat portions or uh, even the burn offering, which was all supposed to be burnt. The priest would get the skins, uh, but not the drink offering. The drink offering is just poured out. 
and um, and the example that I always think of that that is is a drink offering that seems like what that seems like such a waste is the story of David with his three mighty men. And uh, my mom actually hates this story because she's like, ah, that seems like such a waste to do this. And you might know where I'm going with it. But in the story, David and, the, is, and his men are fighting against the Philistines and they're holed up. And the Philistines have occupied David's hometown of Bethlehem. And, uh, and David, as you know, maybe after the battle in the, or just in the course of it, at some point, David just, he's just thinking out loud. He's like, man, what I wouldn't give for a drink of water from the well of Bethlehem right now. You know, you think of those times where you're like, oh, if I could just have this and you're tired and you're, you're, you're just wishing for something. And his three mighty men overhear this and they say, we are going to get David that drink of water from that well. And so they take off and start fighting through the Philistines, or maybe they're, they're doing like this reconnaissance thing and they sneak into the town and, and they get to the, and I picture them, these three guys, they're risking their lives. They're going behind enemy lines just to get David this drink of water and they, and they, um, and they sneak in and they get to where they're, they're going. And, uh, and then they get up water from the well. And so they carry this water in there and I'm picturing them fighting. Maybe two guys are fighting and one's holding it or, you know, they're surrounded and they're back to back and they're all trying to get through. Oh, don't spill it. Don't spill it. And they, they have this water and they're fighting through and they finally get back to David and, uh, and Dave, and this is incredible. You know, they risk their lives to get in this cup of water. And David, when he gets it, says, I can't drink this. This is the, the life of, the, of these men. And the Bible says he pours it out to the Lord. And can you imagine being there and being one of those guys that fought through the, the enemy lines to get in this cup of water? And suddenly uh, they're like, here you go, my king. I, we've got this cup of water for you. And David's like, I can't drink it. And then he just pours it out pours it out, but he pours it out unto the Lord. And I think that's the key. And the way that, and, and you think, oh, they just risked their lives, just drink it, David. But this is how David says it. He poured it out unto the Lord and he said, be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is not this the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore, he would not drink it. And I think it's, it's the perspective that David said, this kind of loyalty is only due to God. Like this kind of an offering where they are risking their lives, pouring themselves out, that is only for the Lord. And so David just takes it and pours it out unto the Lord. Um, and wh so what does this have to do with us? Why am I even bringing this up? I, well, I think sometimes we feel like our lives and the things we're doing for the Lord are a waste and we, we're pouring ourselves out and it seems futile, futile and there seems like there's no effect and that nothing's being accomplished and that we're just, we're just giving everything and there's no benefit from it. And, um, uh, and we look at our lives and we say, wow, what a waste. And I could have done this and this, but I, I gave it up for the Lord. And I, I, I set this aside so that I could serve God. And now, now look at where I'm at. And, and it almost seems like we're, it's just a waste. The, the apostle Paul at the very end of his life, he's in prison. Everyone else has forsaken him except for Luke. He's writing to Timothy. He's all by himself. He, and he says, hey, don't be ashamed of me, God's prisoner. And so you know people were saying, oh, look at Paul. He, he's given everything for God, and now he's in prison about to get his head chopped off by Nero, which he was. And, uh, and he, but the way he says it in 2 Timothy 4, 6, he says, and again, this is the ESV as well, but he says, I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I'm being poured out as a drink offering. The way he saw his life was, it may look like a waste to everybody else, but I am being poured out as a drink offering. God deserves this. Deserves this. I, I. This is my. This is my goal. This is my desire. And um. And I think what we need to do is get the mentality of the woman right before Jesus uh, died. It was the week before, and Mary, the sister of Lazarus and Martha, she comes to Jesus, and you remember the story. She comes with uh, her alabaster box, a very precious ointment, and um, she comes as they're eating and she pours it on Jesus' head as they're sitting at meat. She pours it on his feet. Um, and she and I think in John, it says she even breaks the alabaster box in order to get in there to pour out this ointment. And she's crying and she's, you know, wiping his feet with her hair. And 
And you remember, Judas pipes up and, what is going on here? What is the reason for this waste? Look at, look at how much potential this oil had. It could have been sold for a lot of money and given to the poor. And people may look at us sometimes and think that the life we're living for God is a waste. You could be a business executive. You could be a CEO. You could, you could have done all of these other things. Why, why would you give that up? Why would you give this up? Why, why are you pouring yourself out? Why are you so tired doing all these things for God all the time? And what is the purpose of this waste? But Jesus says, leave her alone. What, and the idea is like, she has done what she, what she's done is beautiful to me. And he says, um, verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman hath done, be told for a memorial of her. He says, everywhere the gospel's preached, this story will be told. And, and I don't think he's just saying that this story will be told uh, just because it's a great story or whatever, but this story, as opposed to any of the other ones, like walking on the water or feeding the 5,000 or, or David and Goliath or Noah's Ark, like this story needs to be told wherever the gospel is preached. And I think the reason is because this is the proper response to the gospel. It's that heart that he's looking for, that I will pour out everything I have for you, Jesus. Even if everybody else thinks it looks like a complete waste, I'm just going to pour it out for you. Um, and that's what shows real love. That's what he loves. And so I want to encourage you today. If you feel like it, this is this is the attitude that we must have when we're approaching the Lord. We may feel like our lives are just being completely poured out as a drink offering, and and wow, why are they pouring this out? Why why is she breaking that alabaster box? Why is the the all that one and a half quarts of wine that's just being poured out? The these men just risk their lives and then just pour it out. David's like, I can't drink it. Just pouring it out before the Lord, right? Why? What is the purpose of this waste? But if it's for the Lord, I want to encourage you that even if you're being completely emptied out, even if you're being completely drained, even if there's, it seems like there's nothing left and you're just being offered on the sacrifice of your faith, have the attitude of Paul and say, I joy and rejoice because you know what? Jesus poured out his soul in death and he's worth it. And so it is not a waste whenever we're pouring ourselves out for the Lord. Um, so anyways, I hope that makes sense. I hope that encourages you. Um, it, it's encouraged me in the past that Jesus is there to defend even when everyone else thinks it's a waste. Lord, I pray for the people that are seeing this, that um, God, we would have that mentality to be able to pour ourselves out for you. Uh, I want to have that attitude of the Apostle Paul, the attitude of the woman who broke the alabaster box of ointment on, his, on your feet. Lord, I want to have your mindset and be where you're at. It's not a waste if we are pouring ourselves out for you. It is not useless. It is not futile if we're being poured out in your service, God. We are, we are nothing, Lord. We are just um, here as your servants, as people who want to offer ourselves up to you, God. And so I pray that your word would go forth. And Lord, that you would kindle a, a desire, a burning desire for you in the hearts of everyone who watches this, everyone who listens. In Jesus' name. Um, God bless you. See you in church.